All right, guys, so after you have completed the color retouch portion of the exam, then you're going to go to get prepared to do your um, virgin hair relaxer. Before I go to my virgin hair relaxer, what am I going to do with this? Thank you. This is going to go inside of my items to be disinfected container. Oh, my God. You're like Tammy. What you gonna do about my curling iron? <laughs> so after I kind of check my area and just kind of tidy up and look at my area, um, you know, let's say I had some time left. I do want to kind of check my area. If I don't have time left, of course, I'm just gonna step back. But the examiner is gonna read this portion. They are gonna say, you will perform a virgin hair relaxer application. You will apply simulated relaxer product on the single back subsection of the hair. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will be instructed individually by the examiner to demonstrate a virgin hair relaxer application. This is an untimed section. Do not begin to demonstrate the virgin hair relaxer application until instructed individually by the examiner to do so. So this is our first encounter with an untimed section. That examiner is gonna come up to you and that examiner is going to tell you individually, they're gonna say, uh, please demonstrate the virgin hair relaxer application procedure. When they come up to you individually and tell you that everybody else is probably gonna be sitting down or standing up at the practical, at our practical exam, like I said, we'll have chairs for you guys to sit down at. When you go to the real practical exam, from my understanding, is that you will have the option to either sit or stand, and that's how you will be for the remainder of the exam. Even so. sitting during a service, like if while you, you're doing the haircut, you gotta be sitting? If you choose to sit down, that's you what you gotta do the throughout the procedure, yep. If mm -hmm. you're gonna stand, you gotta stand, so it's not either or at the actual exam. But I thought we weren't even supposed to be standing, I mean sitting down. They give, they give you the option there, so as a stylist, that's really just not gonna be your reality. So there, I've seen a stylist who had a broke leg who was sitting, who was working. And she had a, like a little chair where she, you know, you can do that, you can, but realistically, that's just not something that we're gonna be in the shop doing, sitting down and doing. Sure yeah. Say that again. It makes it longer than what you're doing. That and your body position. Sometimes, you know, I will say if there's a person with long hair or something, position yourself, you will, sometimes you do have to sit down, let them stand up. Mm -hmm. And you sit down so that you can see the length. So you can't create a straight line. So if I'm doing this and trying to get to the hair, then my elbows and everything is switching around, but I will, those instances where I will sit down. You know what I mean? All right, so now we have said, gone over, and the, and the examiner has told us, okay, now it's time for me to begin the virgin relaxer application process. I still have on gloves, that is perfectly fine. When they approach me and tell me and make that statement, I'm gonna hit my hand sanitizer, and then I'm going to take my rat tail comb and I'm going to find me a section because it said any subsection. We are doing the back left subsection. Okay, we're doing one subsection. So when you're doing a virgin relaxer application, the subsections are one fourth of an inch wide. Okay, when you're doing a relaxer retouch, the subsections are one fourth of an inch wide. So that means from this part right here, so if I was going to do one section, right, let me just create me a good little space here. If I was gonna do one subsection, that will be from, let me move this out of the way. I can come in here from this part, I'm gonna come below that one fourth of an inch and go from one side to the other side. This is a real life subsection, okay? I could start anywhere on this area. It's just easier for you just to grab this top section right here, okay? I have it kind of pinched in my hand because the subsection is thin. Okay, it's really skinny. So I want to gain a little bit of control when I apply it. Did you just say pinched? Yeah. I, I'm pinching it, I'm, I'm gonna pinch it. <laughs> For real though, grab it. Because if not, you're gonna see that it's kind of loose and when you're trying to apply to this little skinny little piece, it's gonna give you a little rough time. I like to pinch my end. <laughs> I really do. I pinch out one inch so I know not to apply it here. <laughs> now with this, with this right here, normally you would apply base. For this particular direction that they gave us, when we went to the exam, they said that this one does not require a base. 
there's only one type of relaxer that technically has a built-in base, and that is your um, calcium hydroxide, your guanidine hydroxide. These are your sensitive scalp relaxers. They have a built-in base inside of them. Their whole role is that it's sensitive on the scalp. Now, the issue with that is that it still has high, basically your hydroxide. It still has a high pH. Because of that, we base for everything. So salads, as a salad, you're still going to base. The, the manufacturer directions may give you the option, but you're going to see even in textbook, it's, it suggests go ahead and base anyway. This is a strong chemical, right. okay? So I don't have to, but before the exam, they tell us we do not have to base for it, okay? This is a virgin application. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to start off kind of putting my finger at the, for me, this is what works best for me. I like to prop my finger to start off kind of close to the scalp. So I can see what my one fourth, my oh, excuse me, what my one fourth of an inch is. Okay, excuse me, my half of an half inch. I'm sorry, inch. my half inch. So I want to put my finger in here, and I want to put this half inch away from the scalp. My subsection is a fourth of an inch wide, and when I first apply, I'm going to be half an inch away from the scalp. So I'm going to apply here. So you see how I'm half an inch away from the scalp. And I'm going to drag this down, and I'm going to go ahead and pinch out one inch so I know not to apply it. Start off there. Stop, Ivy. And I'm going to drag this product down. So we're not fanning it. And then I'm going to take it up to this area right here. What you mean by fanning it? Going, brushing vertically. Like this? No, like. I'm going down. I'm going with the growth of the hair. So anytime you're applying product, it should be with the growth. So here, I'm going downward. That's the growth of the hair. I'm flipping it up. Now I got to go this way because that's the growth if I was to go it that way. So to answer your question, always go with the growth of the hair. So if I have it down here, downward, I'm lifting it up. I got to go back this way. What you're asking is holding the brush vertically and going yeah. down the shaft. Like this right here. It's going to take too long. You want to get that product in there and drag it for this one. This is sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, guanidine hydroxide. I don't have time for this, okay. for this product. This is a get it on, get her on, okay? So I have it off a half an inch away from the scalp and I have it where I don't have it on one inch. Now I gotta go back and apply it to those. So I'm gonna start kind of smoothing this product in, but I also wanna apply. Go to the scalp? Uh -huh. Now you oh. wanna kind of, here's the trick with this. You wanna get as close to the scalp without getting it on the scalp. Okay, so after I've gone through all four quadrants, let's imagine I've done half an inch away from the scalp and one inch with no product. I've done one quadrant, two quadrant, three quadrant, four quadrant. Now I have to go back and fill in those little spaces. So that half inch, it's, it's like you got, look, y'all just kind of peep. Look how far away I am away from the scalp. I'm not at the scalp all the way. I'm getting as close as I can without touching the scalp. Okay, and the beauty in curly hair and these relaxers is that that curly is going to give me a cushion. I ain't going to have to fight too hard with trying to stay away from the scalp because that curl is going to give me that cushion that when I come close to the scalp, it's just going to still kind of stay lifted away. But once it starts breaking it down is when it's going to start getting on the scalp. So this is a fast motion. I would be going close that I can and dragging it to the end. So for it to get like closer to the scalp, would it be better if we angle the hair strand? So right here, that it's going to naturally start melting down. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to try to really try to fight with it that hard to get to the scalp. If I just get close enough like this, see like it's already kind of, but her hair is straight. But I'm trying to get as close as I can and I'm smoothing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I'm smoothing this strand. I like to take my hand and kind of put some pressure on it. Okay. And then I can flip it to the other side and put some more pressure on it. Because now what the goal is this, I'm trying to take curly hair and I'm trying to get it into this new straight position. So I also got to do a mechanical, uh, like a, a straightening motion to flatten it down. But at the same time, my product is doing its job as well. So I'm going to straighten the hair out. So did you see, so I came in half an inch away from the scalp, didn't put it on one inch and I went back and applied it close to the scalp, not directly on the scalp, and then pulled it down to the ends. It's going to eventually get up here. Because I'm not coming to you to, do, to straighten my hair for me to leave with kinky roots. You see what I'm saying? So, it, so you're hearing people say it don't touch the scalp. It, the last five minutes is when it basically touches the scalp. 
So at some you point, have your bangs there too to protect the scalp. Exactly. Your goal isn't really to go and slap it right on the scalp, but it's going to get there. I got to smooth the hair back. If not, like I said, my client is going to come out with really straight mid shafts and ends. And if I don't smooth like I really need to at the scalp area that they're telling you not to apply at, I'm going to have, it's going to look like I have a restock. I need a retouch leaving out of your shop. You see what I'm saying? So you do have to go in and do this motion throughout that hair. Okay, don't be fooled. You know what I'm saying? Now, so I think I think a firm, I think it was a, no, Mazzani did a great job. They came at the very last end, said the last five minutes basically. The right. last three, the la that's when you come back in and start doing this where I'm smoothing at the scalp. That is the last five minutes. By then, my client is probably saying, Oh, it's burning. If it stays on the scalp any longer than five minutes, they're going to start compl complaining about irritation. So that's why you, it's going to prevent you from doing your job if you go to the scalp prematurely. Does that make sense? Right. So if I'm up there messing with the scalp and I got all this hair back here, this virgin that needs to be yeah, straightened out. When you get like the upper quadrants to apply it at the root and run it through. Right. That's the last. So I've gone in. So basically, I'm going to take the strand, apply product halfway away from the scalp. So let me do it one more time for you. I okay. thought we were only doing one subsection. We are, but I'm just teaching. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure y'all, everybody's clear. On the full what... head, we go in and do that touch up all last. Yes. So okay. it, so for this part of the exam, let me just kind of want to give us a new section just to make sure that we're clear on it. I would take one area, okay, one complete subsection. So there's a part. I'm going to come below that one-fourth of an inch wide, okay? I'm going to take that section, and I'm going to apply the relaxer half an inch away from the scalp. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply it. I'm focusing on being a, about half an inch away from the scalp, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy. Her hair is short, and I'm gonna cover up. I know I'm not gonna put it on that end right there. Not yet, not one inch down here. So I'm gonna cover that up, and I'm gonna apply to the top, and I'm gonna apply to the back. Then I'm gonna start smoothing this product, but as I'm smoothing, I'm getting a little bit closer to that scalp, and apply and getting product there as well because it can't do its job if the product is not there. And then I want to begin to smooth this down to the end. And I got to have product down here. If not, it's just going to be a curly mess and I'm just smoothing some curly stuff. So the, product, so the product must be there. So I'm smoothing over the top. Now we don't want to take this, look at this. You don't want to do where you're dragging the product off. This is a no-go for a relaxer. I need that. I need my product to do its job. So as I'm putting pressure, I need to make sure that the product is still staying on the strand. That makes sense? If I did that and I pulled it up, I need to apply the product on there. I need to make sure that it is covered with that product so the sodium hydroxide can begin to break that product, the hair down, the hair strand down. So it's both. When we did a chemical wave, we rolled the hair. We changed the shape. And then we let the product break it and reform it into that new shape. Here, the shape is straight. So we're smoothing that hair in a straight position, but we gotta have the product there as well to start doing its job. If not, I'm just smoothing like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> and all I'm gonna do is keep, keep kinking up. So it definitely comes down to saturation with relaxers and making sure that it's there to do its job. I don't wanna take little thin little pieces and have some areas that's covered and some areas that's not. I'm gonna end up with what we call some areas that are under processed. Meaning I'm going to still see a lot of really curly pieces. I might still see some straight pieces. That hair is going to break and snap at those two places. If I do a half job on one area and a really good job on another area, now my client, maybe a month later, might have breakage because I under-processed one area and did, and did the right thing and processed one area accurately. And the longer I let that go on under-processed, my client is going to eventually see breakage because the hair is going to fight against it. those two wave patterns. We're going to kind of start because it's really vulnerable when you get a when you get a relaxer that your integrity of your hair is just different. Mm -hmm. It's already at this weakened state. Right. So from now for me, you know what I'm saying. So that's just things that we kind of have to um, think about. So if I got that one part that was broken down really straight, that little under process part that's still kind of wavy, the more I keep combing and combing at it, it might start pulling. And at that sensitive because straight, you it, wouldn't treat that hair texture the same way you're treating the. the that was straight. Exactly, and that's that vulnerable piece. So with that, after you go in, you're basically done. So like I said, this one at some point, I know we, you know, we don't start off with it on the scalp, but during that process, expect it to get close to the scalp to be able to straighten these little, these little curly hairs. Baby hairs. Mm-hmm, baby hairs. <laughs> <laughs> and now, it, on a real client, mm -hmm. do we put base? 
So for real client, yes, we're gonna base everybody for real client. This for this particular exam, for this portion, it does not call for base for the relaxer. It does not. The only thing that calls for base for this for the chemicals is your perm and your chemical wave and your color for this relaxer. I mean, not this relaxer, but for this exam. Nope, just that one subsection. That one, that one, exactly what I did. That's all.